Welcome to the Answers for Elders radio show. Meet the trusted experts who will give you straight answers and will help guide you on the path of later life care. Now, here's your host, founder, caregiver, and CEO, Suzanne Newman. And welcome back, everyone, to Answers for Elders Radio Network. And I am here with the amazing Flana Perkins. And for those of you that know my middle or my maiden name is Perkins, I always find out one of these days we've got to check to see if we're related some way. <laughs> but anyway, we are here. She is here on behalf of Fidelta Home Care, which services uh, seniors in uh, throughout the greater Seattle area and Portland. And we are in P- Portland and Salem in the Oregon area. So we're very excited to have Flana on the program. So Flana, I am interested um, in this first um, we had talked about specifically how we, you know, don't want to go down the rabbit hole. But I think the other thing is honoring yourself. And I always use a term, uh, you know, a caregiver isn't supposed to be a sacrificial lamb. They are supposed to be an advocate. And I think that's a mind shift. It's a, an ability to understand that you're a facilitator and it's still about your loved one's life. And I think that's one of the things that we forget. I know I forgot that at point. Um, what do you find with that, with that concept? With you know, family? one thing I see a lot of times is that decision-making leaves the client and goes to somebody else. Yeah. It stop trusting that our, our parent, mm-hmm. for example, yeah. Can make their own decisions and they can live their own life and there's this concept right. that's out in the kind of the space and it's called dignity of risk and sometimes we don't give people that dignity to take their own risks and we know that mm-hmm. people sometimes have risky behavior i'm not saying like we're letting someone you know jump off a bridge or do something like that but also to know that to allow them to live the life that they want to mm-hmm. live and i think yeah. that's a hard thing as a like especially an adult child going in, you know, you've lived your own separate life from your parent. Now your parents' health is declining and you come in and you really start dictating a lot of things. And to me, that's when I see the relationship between the the client, our, our client or the elderly person. Mm-hmm. And they're, you know, in many cases, their adult child mm-hmm. really, really take a turn for the worst. And mm-hmm. because the, the caregiver, um, it's really important to allow the person who needs care, the ability to continue to make decisions for themselves Mm -hmm. and have that independence. And sometimes mistakes will be made and it's okay. And we will get through it together. But I think that by doing that, you end up having more trust with your, with your parent, for example, or whomever you care for and understand what their really wants and desires are. And one really alarming statistic that we hear a lot of is a lot of um, a lot of seniors are moving into senior living communities, which is fine, and it's a, a great place for people to move to. But there's a statistic out there that 70% of people are moving into senior living communities that don't want to be there. And to wow. me, that's alarming because it tells me that are they really able to make the decision? Mm-hmm. And are they living in the environment that brings them mm-hmm. the most happiness? And yeah. That's an alarming statistic. And so I think that we need well, to- Well, and I, th- I think what you're saying too is the fact that- um, you know, we all want to do right by our parents. And a lot of times you don't have a choice, uh, but they have to go into skilled, more of a skilled care yeah. situation. But I think a lot of families, they don't understand what options are out there. I know for me, when I was first thrust in the care of my loved one, I knew nothing, right? And I had to figure out, okay, what's the right path to take? And there's a lot of times that you're in a situation where people are pounding at you to make a certain decision and you don't feel like you have all the resources. You don't feel like you're you're in a scenario where you go, wow, you know, I need to make these choices for myself. And part of that factor of the care of a loved one is how can you make everybody happy? And I know that home care is a big, wonderful way to improve the quality of both the lives of the caregiver and the senior. How do you find, Flana, that um, adjustment time when you come into to helping a caregiver? What happens usually? Well, one, one thing that I think is important to note is a lot of times we come in too late. So yeah. we're coming in very late in the process mm-hmm. of the person's illness. And so yeah. the person with 
with dementia, we're coming in when the dementia might be very acute. And so mm -hmm. now it's very difficult because we're a stranger and they don't know yeah. us and we're coming in and providing a person that they don't know. And mm -hmm. the, the person receiving care is scared mm -hmm. and they're nervous. Mm -hmm. And so one of the big recommendations I have, and that's why I'm such a believer in respite care, that if you start mm -hmm. seeing that uh, your loved one needs a yeah. little bit more care, needs a little bit more help, starting home care a little bit sooner with fewer mm -hmm. hours and right. in a respite care type situation, we'll then have things in a, in a much better place when you need a little bit more care and you can just mm -hmm. kind of slowly increase care for that loved one. Sure. And it isn't such a whiplashing experience for them. So that's, mm -hmm. that's one of my recommendations. Another mm -hmm. one that I see is when we come in and provide care, most times families are really relieved. It's really powerful. They just feel like they can just kind of like really go back to being the child, the adult child. Mm -hmm being the caregiver which mm -hmm. you probably didn't want to do and it's very hard <laughs> it's very hard you know from my own personal experience my father you know he was um in a kind of a really critical situation in the hospital and there was a chance he was going to make it he'd actually passed away in the hospital but uh. there was a chance he was going to make it and he would have gone home very very ill you know with the right he'd been non-ambulatory he would have they had a colostomy bag like there were a lot of things going on and i literally worked in this field my entire mm -hmm. life. I know how to navigate the system. I panicked. I'm like, yeah. I don't know how to do this. I worked yeah. my whole life. I don't know how to do this. So really having that kind of empathy for someone that really has, d mm -hmm. has absolutely no experience and they're kind of thrust into something like mm -hmm. that. It's very difficult. And it really does create a lot of. Yeah. I always tell families always get registered with a home care agency. Do your research up front because yeah. If you're in a situation where, like you said, it's too late and I have to get somebody in here now, you have to start a, a process and you can't even get someone in there for maybe two to three weeks. And you've got to go through paperwork. You've got to go through all these situations of who to hire, who's the best organization. Yeah. And I think one of the things that I always say is get, you know, select a home care agency, whoever they are before <laughs> You exactly. need them. Exactly. And I think that's the thing. Then you pick up the phone. If you have a, if you have a fall, you need somebody, whatever it is, you don't have to go through a process. You can have somebody there that day in many cases. Isn't yeah. that correct? Absolutely. If you have a home care agency on board that you work with and you have a relationship mm -hmm. with, they know, they know the client, they have, a, they have yeah. all the work done there. And every state has a lot of regulations around these services. It isn't just a matter of sending mm -hmm dispatching a caregiver into a home, but there's a very kind of formal process that happens mm -hmm. you know, initiated. So mm -hmm. I agree. And when, when we see the situations that are very stressful, very hard are ones where the family, right. and the client, there's just been mm -hmm. a lot of delay in getting services started. And right. Really and on. especially if someone's on Medicaid, they have to get approved. They get, have to get all of these situations done. Yeah. So I always recommend to families, if you're aging in place at home, even if you don't need home care, get yourself registered with one. You never know if something would happen tomorrow that you would have a fall, if you yeah. would get sick and need help to come in or anything like that. So Flana and I, we are going to be right back right after this. We at Answers for Elders thank you for listening. Did you know that you can discover hundreds of podcasts in our library on senior care? So visit our website and discover our decision guides that will help you also navigate decision making. Find us at AnswersForElders.com.